All right, so there we, there we go. So find the value of sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent at that point P is the point on the unit circle that corresponds to the real number T. Okay, what are they talking about? So they're giving me this point P here, right here, and they're saying that's a point on the unit circle. You can see it on your unit circle also. Basically, that's the X and the Y coordinate. Let me... Let me make it a little bigger. So basically, on your unit circle that I just gave you, and I'd encourage you to use that to do all your homework and um, put it on your 3x5 card. I'd make one side of my 3x5 card that unit circle and, and use it on the next exam. That, oh, is that true? Does the next exam go up? Yeah, the next exam includes 6-2 and 6-3. So we have this section and one more, two sections of trig. And on those sections, they'll be on part one, no calculator. So the trig, all the trig on the exam number four we're going to take will be no calculator. Not just no graphing calculator, no calculator at all. Unit circle, though. So you don't have to memorize them. You can put them on your unit circle. But it's, I think it's really valuable because of what it does for you in calculus to be picturing the unit circle every time you figure out a trig angle. I don't know what your experience was in trig. If your trigonometry teacher just lets you use your calculator all the time or, or something like that, but I don't, and I think they're hampering you if they do that, so I want to help you. But I will give you this. So I'm not, I'm not big into memory and stuff, but I'm big into you looking at the unit circle because picturing them on the unit circle will really help you when you get to calculus and they do limits because they'll be moving. And if all you've ever done is hit the buttons, you don't really understand what's going on when they're moving in calculus with sines and cosines and stuff. All right, so let's talk about that. So, on the, so the way you should do this one then without a calculator on the next exam, two weeks from today, is you would, they would just give you a point. So this is a point right here. And they're telling me the coordinates of this point is over square root of 3 over 2 up a half. They're telling me this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. It's a point on the unit. This is called the unit circle. Unit means one. It's a circle of radius one. It's one to the edge everywhere. Remember the unit circle from your trig days? So um, how can I find sine, cosine, tangent, and all the rest from that? Does anybody remember? What's the x coordinate? The x coordinate is always cosine. The y coordinate is always sine. So that's something you do want to memorize. That'll be used all the time. So basically, anytime they give you a point on the unit circle, then that x coordinate is cosine. So what's, so what's the sine equal? The first question is, what's the sine? T, t is the angle, by the way. The, you know, from here to here, the angle opening is t. The, the sine of t is the y coordinate, a half. The cosine of t is the x coordinate, root 3 over 2. What's the tangent of t? Does anybody remember the definition on that one? Sine over cosine. This will all be coming back to you. It's kind of, I love seeing math a second time. It was help. It's when I first kind of, I took algebra two and I, we did a bunch of tr uh, pre calc trig. And anyway, then I kind of retook it. Didn't really, I took pre calc, but it was a lot of repeat. Anyway, it was very helpful to me. I repeated this stuff twice when I first took it in high school and it was helpful to see the second time. So maybe that'll be helpful to you. So remember, tangent is sine over cosine. So then you just put a half over. Root 3 over 2 like that. Half over root 3 over 2 like that. And then um, what, do we, what do we do when we have a fraction over a fraction? One from the bottom flips up, right? And it multiplies the 2's cancel. Get 1 over root 3. And then remember how we never leave a square root in the denominator? So what do we do? Bless you. Thank you. What do we do with that 1 over square root of 3? Multiply and multiply root 3 over 3 like that. We get square root of 3. Square root of 3, square root of 3 is, whoops, plane 3. So there's the tangent. Good so far. So I've got the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. I'm halfway there. Now, do you remember that the other three are just flips upside down of these three? Remember how that works? Like, um, so next I'll do the uh, cosecant of t. So that's upside down of sine. 
So it would be 2 over 1, or just 2. Remember that co and you can put all this on your 3 by 5 card, you know. So sine is cosecant. And then on the final, you get a full sheet of paper, because then just trig stuff will be on the final, too. So cosecant is upside down. In fact, I can just write the definitions if it's helpful for you. Tangent is sine over cosine. Well, here, let me, let me do this. Let me lay it out a little bit better. So there's sine, there's cosine, there's tangent, which is sine over sine over cosine. Like that. And then upside down, cosecant is 1 over sine, and secant is 1 over cosine, and cotangent is 1 over tangent. They're the upside downs of sine, cosine, and tangent. So notice, maybe remember, how it all comes from sine and cosine. Sine and cosine produces everything else. Really, all of trig is just about sine and cosine. If you, if you know sine and cosine, you know everything, because then tangent is sine over cosine, the cosecant and secant are just upside down of sine and cosine, and then cotan is just upside down of tan. So it all comes from sine and cosine, doesn't it? All of trig is really just sine and cosine. The other functions are all Johnny-come-latelys, right? They're just made out of sine and cosine. So it might be a good thing to put on your 3x5 card, or you might, it already, you might already know it. Okay, so getting back then. So cosecant here, 1 over, you know, upside down of sine, so that would be 2. And then, let me get a little room here. We need to get secant, which is upside down of cosine. So let's do that. So come up here. Secant is upside down of cosine. So I'll just flip over. I just took root 3 over 2 and flipped it upside down. Is that okay? But you can't leave the root on the bottom, as you know. So then just multiply. Top and bottom by root 3. So we get 2 root 3 in the bottom. Root 3, root 3. Plain 3. Is that good there, like that? Makes sense. And then finally, tangent. Tangent. We're going to, I mean, I mean, cotangent, right? Cotangent, which is upside down. So flip over the tangent. Right, so I took the tangent answer, flip it upside down for cotan. And then you gotta got to get rid of the root. Can't have the root. So multiply top and bottom by root 3. Whoops. And bottom by root 3. We get 3 root 3. The bottom, root 3, root 3. Plane 3, these cancel. Root 3. So cotan is, is just root 3. And we got them all. We got all 6. That okay? Do you remember some of that? Coming back to you now, remember that the x is always good. That all came, that this all came from the fact that x is always cosine. Y is always sine when you're a point on the unit circle. That's why the unit circle is so important. Is that good questions? Can I move on from that? Is that good? Okay. So tangent of 6 pi. Okay, so how are you supposed to, 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 to find the tangent of 6 pi without a calculator? Well... First off, um, that's a radian angle. Remember radian angles, and they give you the pies and the things like that? Let's convert that to, well, we could. Maybe, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it. Do you remember um, six, 6 pi? Do you remember, do you remember the unit circle? How far? Well, in fact, let me get Okay, so there we go. So the question is, find the tangent of 6 pi. Let's look at your unit circle. Where is 6 pi? Well, look. All the way around is 2 pi. This, this is a unit, nice unit circle because it has the degrees, the radians, has everything. All the way around is the 2 pi. So that means if you start here at 0, go all the way around, that's 2 pi, or 360. Remember that? Remember how that works from, um, from your earlier days? Pi, pi, pi radians is 180 degrees. You can see it right here. 
pi is 180. Halfway around, pi is halfway around. Pi radians is 180 degrees. Anyway, so all the way around once is 2 pi. So 2 pi is 360. All the way around once is 2 pi. So if you, and then if you go around again, now you've done 4 pi, 2 pi and 2 pi, 4 pi. And if you go all the way around a third time, now you've done 6 pi. So where do you end up when you've traveled through 6 pi? So if you go, if you go, if you go all the way around once, that's 2 pi distance. Twice you're, you've traveled 4 pi. Three times, right? You're, you were talking about the angle, how much angle you've turned through. When you've turned around completely around three times, that's 6 pi. So basically you end up, you end up really where you started. You end up right there after going completely around three times. That's what 6 pi is. It's 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi. So what? Well, that means you're at the point 1, 0. Remember, the x coordinate is cosine. The y coordinate is sine. So cosine is 1. Sine is 0. Use those two to find any trig function you want at that point, which is the 6 pi point. Does that make sense how you find angles without a calculator? You just, when they give you 6 pi or they give you any particular angle, you just find that spot on the unit circle. We just found that spot's right here because it's all the way around three times. And then you look at the x, y number. The x is cosine, the y is sine. Then just use those to compute your angle without a calculator. So we go back and we say, okay, we end up at the point. The point we end up is 1, 0. This is cosine, this is sine right here. 1, 1, 0. So go back, 1, 0. What do they want? Tangent? They want tangent there? Okay. Tangent is, remember, sine over cosine. So it'll be sine, which is 0, over cosine, which is 1. 0 over 1 is? 0. zero. We're done. No calculator needed. Tangent of 6 pi is 0. Is that good? Do you remember that or feel like you could do that? If you put that unit circle on your 3x5 card, you should probably occupy a whole side of your 3x5 card. For the next exam. Questions on that? Okay. Sine of negative pi over 2. Well, what you could do is you could go find that again on the unit circle. So let's do that. So where is negative pi over 2? Well, Let's go back. It'd probably be helpful to convert to degrees. I think better in degrees than I do in radians. So do you know how to convert? Do you remember any of that? The pi is 180. That's, that's the way, main way you convert. You just replace that pi with 180 because pi radians is 180 degrees. So that's what I would do right away. I'd go, okay, this is sine of minus 180 over 2. This is sine of minus 90 degrees. You with me to that point? So they want, they're really asking me to find the sine of minus 90 degrees. So I go to my unit circle and I say, okay, now, there, now I didn't put, or I copied this off the internet, this unit circle, there's, they didn't put negative angles. How do you do, right, they've only got positive. Here's, here's, here's positive regular 90, huh? How do we do, so that means, here's zero, remember zero starts right here, here's zero degrees, it starts right, it's straight to it. So this is the starting point. Right here, this is the dot right here where you start, zero degrees, and then you open up to 30 and 45 and 60 and 90 and 120, you know, bigger, bigger and bigger angles as you, as you open up. So how do you do negative angles? You go down, huh? Remember that from your trick days? So you start at zero degrees, and you go up for positive, bigger, bigger angles, and you go down for negative. So they say negative 90, I'm going to go straight down, aren't I? This must be negative 90 degrees, because that makes a 90 degree angle with the start, huh? So it's negative 90. And so here's the point, right here. And what's the coordinates? Zero, negative one. Do you understand? That literally is the point. Zero, negative, like if I was to draw, let's go back to the main screen. If I was to draw my own little unit circle here, like this, and say, what are, what are the coordinates? I mean, like the x, y graphing coordinates of that point. I'd say that's over 0, down 1. How do I know it's down 1 and not like down 10 or something? It's a unit circle. Remember, the radius is 1. The total distance to the edge is 1 anywhere. So that's down 1. 
So that's over, this point is over zero down one, isn't it? And remember, the x coordinate is cosine, the y coordinate is sine. So you just look at this unit circle right here. You say negative 90, x coordinate is zero, y coordinate is same. That's cosine, sine. So cosine, sine. What do they want? They want sine, negative one. That's how we do that without a calculator, and that'll help you in calculus when the things are moving. Questions to that point? We good? Feel free to speak up. Please do speak up. I don't, I don't know where you're at, how much you remember, how much you want to... Okay, so cosine 60 plus sine 45. Let me encourage you, just grab your unit circle, look at the cosine, look at 60 degrees, and grab the cosine. Remember, it's x is cosine, y is sine. And then look at your 45, grab the sine, and then see if you can do some algebra to combine those. I'll draw a little thing here. So it, this is 60 degrees, this is 45 degrees. So the 60 degree is going to say over a half up root 3 over 2. The 45 is going to say over root 2 over 2, up root 2 over 2. Like that, right? That's what they say. And so this is the cosine, this is the sine, this is the cosine, this is the sine. So they want cosine of 60, so they want what? This one, so it's a half, plus they want sine of 45, which is this one, root 2 over 2. That good? And just put those together, common denominator, we don't need to mess around at all, we can just Put them, just put them in one fraction because they already have common denominator. And that's the answer they want. They don't want a decimal. They say type exact answer using radicals. No, they don't want to. Uh, they, don't even, they won't even take the calculator decimal answer. You have to do it this way. Good. Questions I can answer? So number eight here, so five secant pi over three plus seven cotan pi over six. So use your, use your unit circle. Look for those angles. Now secant, we've got to remember what secant is. Secant is upside down of cosine. And I think you know cotangent is upside down of tangent. So feel free to help each other out. Use your unit circle. See if you can get those. So secant of pi over 3, secant of pi over 3, what is that? Well, that's 1 over the cosine of pi over 3. And the cosine of pi over 3, right there, is a half. So it's going to be 1 over a half. Grab that, flip it up, 2 over 1, 2. Is that good? Secant of pi over 3 is going to be 2. I'll plug that into the formula in a minute. Let me first now find the cotan cotangent of pi over 6 is 1 over the tangent, or actually, you know, you can just, tangent is sine over cosine, so this will be cosine over sine, is that okay? Remember, remember that tangent is sine over cosine, so if cotangent is upside down, then it's cosine over sine, isn't it, for pi over 6, and then pi over 6, that'd be cosine over sine, that's what the unit circle will show you. 
So it's root 3 over 2 over a half. Grab that half, flip it up, get root 3 over 2 times 2 over 1, cancels out root 3. So this comes out root 3. So the cotangent of pi over 6 is root 3. Okay. And I'll do it right here. Let me flip this up. Times 2 over 1 cancels. Root 3. So we, got, so we got those two. Now we can put it all together. They're saying they want 5 times the secant of pi over 3 plus 7 times the cotan of pi over 6. So 5 secant of pi over 3, 2. Cotan of pi over 6, root 3. So that's 10 plus 7 root 3. And, and we just stop right there. We, you can't make that 17 root 3, right? Because they're unlike terms. If that 10 had a root 3, then you could add them together and get 17 root 3. If they both had root 3s, they'd be like terms. But he doesn't have a root 3, so they stay separate. Just like 10 plus 7x or something. They're unlike terms. We just stop right there. Is that okay? Everybody see how that works? No questions? Okay, so 510 degrees. So that's more than 360. What do you do when they give you an angle more than 360? You subtract the 360 from it, huh? Because yeah, that means it's more than a full circle around. So subtract 360, what is that? Uh, 150? 150 degrees. So it's, it's really 150. Does that, does that make any sense? In other words, 360 is all the way around, and then it goes to here, doesn't it? 150 more. It's 360 plus 150 makes the 510. So 510 is a full circle plus 150. So really, it's 150. You end up at the same spot as if you just said go to 150. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. So there it is. There's the cosine and the sine. What did they want? I don't know. They want, oh, they want them all. Yeah, so, so the spot, the spot ends up being, what did the spot end up being? Uh, minus root 3 over 2, comma, half. So that's the cosine, that's the sine, dot, dot, dot. You can crank out all six trig functions from there. Is that good? Questions I can answer on that? They give you more than 360, just subtract 360. So for negative 30, where would I go on the unit circle? And negative 30 would be down 30, it would be at 330, wouldn't it? It would subtract 30 from 360. So it's, a, it's the same place as 330. It's right here, cosine, sine. Does that make sense? 330 is the same as negative 30, isn't it? There are two ways to say the same position on the unit circle. You can either start and go 330 degrees around almost all the way, or you can just back up 30 degrees down 30 degrees. Same, same spot in the end, huh? 330 or negative 30 degrees. And so we would just look at that, 3 over 2 minus a half. So it's the same. So it's 360, you just subtract 30. And you say, oh, they're really asking me for 330 degrees. So then you find that on the unit circle, right there, and it's over a half, down root 3 over 2, cosine, sine, crank through the Six trig functions. All right, I'll keep. So, what do you do with one thousand one hundred and seventy degrees? Subtract a bunch of three sixties, right? So, I'll just subtract three sixty one. See what I get. What's that? Eight ten. Subtract three sixty again. I don't know what that one is. Got 450. Subtract 
subtract 360 again. Is that 90? So we get down to 90 degrees. So 90 degrees. So then just answer all the questions for 90 degrees. Is that good? So whenever they go more than 360, just keep subtracting, taking out those full, those full circles, full circles, full circles, until you've got some answer under a full circle. It's the same thing as just saying 90. They're really saying find the sine of 90. And if you do 90, that's straight on the unit circle, that's straight up here, which is over 0 up 1. Cosine is the x, sine is the y. So what's the sine of 90? It's got to be 1, doesn't it? Is that good? Part, probably just one on the test, probably just one, where I say, hey, hit the buttons on your calcul calculator. So secant of 61 degrees. Because um, 61 is not one of the ones on the unit circle. right? If you look back at the unit circle you have in your hand, and we just did 30, 45, 60, just, just a few specific angles. So 61... You just use your calculator. So now, how do you do secant? We don't have a secant button, probably. You don't have a secant button. It's 1 over cosine, huh? 1 over cosine. So hit the buttons. Make sure you're in degree mode. You know how, you know how to set your calculator degree mode, radian mode. Any trouble with that, come grab me after class. 10 seconds, we'll have you rolling. So um, I'm getting 2.06. Yeah, two places. That's all they want. So 2.06. Be able to get that on your calculator. Any trouble, come see me. Stop by for 10 seconds. Questions on that? Good. I'll move on. So we have cotan of 7 pi over 19. So I, I probably would just change it. I just I just like doing everything in degrees myself, but if you I say I just stick in the place of that pi, 180 degrees. So that's what I do. I just put in 180 and then just hit the buttons, because that's what pi is. Pi is 180. Oh, cotan. That's one over tan, huh? So one over tan of whatever seven times 180 over 19. I just type it all in like that. That's what I'll do. Tangent of. I'm getting 0.44. Two places, 0.44. You able to get that? Everybody okay with that? You could just change the radian mode and put in the pi and all that. I don't like changing modes. I just stay in degree mode. Stick in a 180. Questions I can answer on that? Is that good? Need a little more time to make sure it calculates out right for you. Is that coming out? Anybody else getting that? I do hit wrong button sometimes. Anybody else getting that answer? I don't see. You got it, Michael? Okay. Good. You don't look thrilled with that, so I'm kind of pausing there. All right, well, come grab me if you're having any trouble getting that to happen. Okay, so they're saying, hey, here's here's an X and a Y. Well, yeah. Um, I have a question on number 14, like that one. We were trying to figure that out. 14, this one? Yeah. What came out? Or maybe I had anybody else get my answer? You got this answer? Are you in, you think you're in the degree mode? Because we did other ones with degrees, though. I can check that with you after. I can show you how to check the mode. Do you have a TI? Is it a TI? Yeah, just hit the um, mode button uh, on the top, top row, second over. Hit mode, and, and the third one for the top is radian degree. You're in mo You're in degree? It's highlighted. The degree is highlighted. With the degree highlighted there. And then, yeah, so then I just typed it in just as it looks there. 
So yeah, come up after. I'll be glad to help with that. Different number, huh? Okay, yeah, grab me after. Okay, so let's take a look. 8, negative 3. So, now, why, uh, what, what you can't do, let me say what you can't do. You can't just go, oh, this is cosine, this is sine, they want sine, negative 3, next question. Not true. Why is that all, isn't that what I've been saying for the whole 45 minutes here? Why can't we just do that? What's wrong with that? I thought that was the deal. Cosine was the first thing. Sine was the second. They want sine. Negative three. Not here. Why not? What's that? Right, yeah. First off, there's a minimum maximum problem. I don't know if you know. Sine never goes above one or below negative one. It can't be negative three. But why can't, what's going on? Why can't we just grab the numbers there? Because those are not on the unit circle. That's, those aren't values on the unit. Look, look at your unit circle. You don't see any 8, negative. Unit circle means only radius 1, right? You go out 8, down 3. Here's the unit circle way over here. Here's 8, negative 3, way beyond the unit circle. So it's only when the dots are on the unit circle, radius 1 circle, that you can use the x coordinate as cosine and the y coordinate as sine. That's only on the unit circle. 8, negative 3 is not on the unit circle. Okay, well then what in the world do we do? Well, you basically, you need to basically make a triangle. Let me just do that. Over 8, down 3, right? This is over 8, down 3. That's the point, over 8, down 3. Like that. And then find the hypotenuse, which will not be 1, because that's not a length of 1, right? It'll be something else. You've got to find that. Call that C, A, B, C. You know, like A squared plus B squared equals C squared Pythagorean theorem. Everybody see what I'm doing? Because this is the point over 8, down 3, I can make a little right triangle, can't I? And find the C. So that would be A squared plus B squared is C squared. So a squared plus b squared is c squared. So 8 squared plus negative 3 squared is c squared. Like that, 64 plus 9 is c squared. So 73 is c squared. Root 73 is c. So c is the root of 73. So what that means is if you divide both these by root 73, you'll put, you'll shrink it down to be on the unit circle. Does that make sense? Now, I, because why? Because the total length of this arm is root 73. Therefore, if you divide everything by that, you'll shrink it down to be a length of 1. Right? If I take that whole triangle, is that making sense? And I divide all these now by root 73, root 73, root 73. What is this? What's root 73 over root 73? 1 now which is what? The length, that's the, that's the radius. I've just shrunk them all. I, I took that whole triangle and went and shrunk it down to fit on the unit circle now by dividing all three of them by the hypotenuse. Now it's on the unit circle. Now, yeah, now that's cosine, that's sine. You can do all the trig functions now. I mean, you got to get rid of the root from the bottom, but I know you can do all that. Did that make sense? You had to shrink those down to fit. Had to shrink that triangle down to fit on the unit circle. So if they want sine now, the sine will be this one. Just get rid of the root from the bottom. <clears throat> Is that okay? So, so the, the official definition that they get, like if you click on the help button, they don't talk about shrinking the triangle. That's what you're doing, though. They just say... Well, sine is really the y-coordinate over the radius r. That's, that's what it did. That, this is the y-coordinate, and this is the radius, huh? It's another way to say the same thing. They just say it like that. They say sine is y over r. Cosine is the x-coordinate. So they're saying cosine isn't just x. It's x over r. Right, right. I mean, they're right. Sine is technically y over r. On the unit circle, the radius is just 1. So that's why in the unit circle, radius 1 circle, sine becomes y over 1, or just y. And cosine is x over 1, or just x, on the unit circle. Does that make sense? Is that okay? So the technical, maybe I should say that a little slower. So the technical definition of sine. When, when, a minute ago when I said, 
Well, sine's just the y coordinate, and cosine's just the x. Not always. Really, sine is y over r, and cosine is x over r. But if you go on the unit circle, radius 1 circle, then, yeah, if the bottom's 1, sine's just y. And cosine, if the r is 1, cosine's just x on the unit circle, right? But if you're not on the unit circle, like this point 8, negative 3 is certainly not in the unit circle, then you've got to take the y-coordinate and divide by the radius, root 73, to get the sign. Good? So you've got to know whether you're on the unit circle or not. And these are not super important. So minus 1, what is it? Minus 1, 6, 1, 8. So sine, then, will be the y over the r. So this is the x, this is the y. So it's the y over the r. How do we find the r? Well, it's a squared plus b squared is c squared, or same thing, x squared plus y squared is r squared. We're just calling them by different letters. a squared, b squared, c squared, x squared, y squared, r squared. It's all the same thing. So that'd be minus 1 6 squared plus 1 8 squared is r squared. What's that? 1 36, 1 is y squared. Man, that's ugly. What is that? Why are they messing us up like that? That's just terrible. I I'm tired of this. Can, we can I move on? No, okay. I'll do something good here. <laughs> I don't want to do all these stupid fractions. We've got 10 minutes. What are we going to do with that thing? Um, oh, I make that Y over there? Why did I make that Y? Those fractions are blinding me. It's an R over there. So anyway, um, you've got to add those somehow, I guess. That's terrible. Okay. We've got to add those. Uh, you could use your calculator. That'd be nice. <laughs> or I'll do it by hand because I love to do fractions. I'm kidding. I'm being a little sarcastic. All right. So you got to add those up. So what would I do? I would try to get some kind of common denominator. I don't know what it is. I, you know what, guys? These are terrible fractions. I would probably just, because I don't know what the common denominator is, I would just multiply by the whole thing. 36, 64. Um, is that true? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would just say, look, I don't know what the least common denominator is, but I can multiply top and bottom of this one by 64. And I can multiply top and bottom of this, let's just do it this way, by 36, and I'll get something. I'll get a common denominator. So what's 64 times 36? It is 2304. I wish I had never started this problem. All right, it's a bad one. But I guess I put it in the homework. I didn't realize it was as bad. 2304, this is going to be 36, is our squared. So add those up, 64 plus 36. What is that? It's 100. So 100 over 2304 is our squared. Root it, root it. Hope 2304 is rootable. Oh, good. Yes, 48. So you root it, you get 10 over 48. Reduce that. What's that? 5 24ths. There's R. Did you track with all that? All right, that's an awful problem. So, I have these terrible fractions, you know, a squared plus b squared is c squared, or x squared plus y squared is r squared. I multiply top bottom by 64, top bottom by 36, combine them 100 over 23 over 4, that's r squared, root it, that's 10, that's 48, reduce 10, 48, divide by 2, right? That's what I did there. Top and bottom, got 5, 24, so that's r, 5, 24, so that's r. So then sine is y, 1, 8, over r, which is 5, 24, Right, grab that thing, flip it up. Can I go on now? Is that good enough? You can do the rest, right? Sine is y over r, cosine is x over r. Uh, and once you have sine and cosine, throw away the r. Remember, the rest of the trig functions all come from sine and cosine, don't they? So once you get sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, then tangent is just sine over cosine, and then the other three are flip, 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 aren't they? Good. Better move on. There's like special properties and things for sine and cosine. They're going to give like little trick questions. And I don't know what it is here. What is that? I don't know. I was hoping it would come to me. Where are the
those in the unit circle? Maybe that's the trick. You guys have the unit circle in front of you? So 40 is not really on our unit circle. I don't know. Oh, I, I think I got the trick. Okay, so here it is. So 40, here we go. Okay, they want the exact... I mean, you can type in the calculator, but I would put this on a non-calculator one. You might think, well, how can we do this? Okay, 40 is not on my unit circle. Right, but they're making you think about the unit circle. Even though 40 is not on there, you could put a 40, right? Where would 40 be? I don't know about right here. Somewhere just below... Uh, 45 is halfway, right? Because 90 straight up. 90 straight, this is zero. This is zero right here, 90 straight up. So 45 is in the middle, so 40 is just barely below the middle. Good so far. Okay, now think about with me for a minute where 3 fifth, no, no, where 220 is. Where's 220? 220 is 180 and 40 more. You see the trick? You starting to see it? Here's 220. Okay, so what? Well, those are exactly 180 apart from each other. Do you see that? Okay, so what? Well, what is sine? Well, they're asking sine for all these. What is sine? The y coordinate, right? So how far over is this? I have no idea. How far up is this? Call it y, because that's the sign. How far over is this? I have no idea. How far down is this? Same amount. It's negative y. What, however far up that one is, this one's down that same amount, right? They're both 40 degrees off of the axes, aren't they? This one's 40 above, that one's 40 below. So whatever positive y this one is, this point here is negative y, the same amount. Well, so what? That means when you add up those two signs, it's eggs, zero, right? This guy, and let me, let me underline them. This guy and this guy add up to equal zero, don't they? Because one of them is positive sign and negative sign. Well, sign is just the y value. That's what you've got to be really clear on your mind. Cosine is the x value. Sine is the height. Signs are always heights. Signs are always y values. That's what they're hitting on. Are you clear on that? Right? So whatever this is up, because it's 40 up, this is just 40 down, same thing. And I bet the other two do the same thing. 135, where's that one? That's right here. It's 90 and 45 more, right in the middle of the second quadrant. 135. So whatever his positive y is right in the middle there. And then this one, what's it, 315? Yeah, that's right here. 315 is 45 off of 360, isn't it? It's negative y values exactly the same. So the answer to this whole thing is a big flat zero. I know for sure. Because the heights and the depths and the heights and the depths exactly cancel. So the answer is zero. Make sense? See the trickery? It's all about making you think about the up and the down of places on the unit circle. Just making sure you're really clear that at any angle, the height there is the sign. Signs are heights. Signs are y values, aren't they? Cosines are how far over? X values. So let's see here. So um, they're saying, okay, the tangent of some angle theta, I don't know what angle, came out for. Then they say, hey, let's add pi. Let's add pi. Well, let me just tell you. The period of, of tangent and cotan is pi. What does that mean, the period? The cycle until the values all start to repeat. In other words, all the answers for tangent or cotangent repeat every pi. Does that make sense? Every pi, 180 degrees, all the answers repeat. So if you have any answer, and then you go pi further down the line, answer's the same. It'll repeat pi further down the line. Now what's the period? of sine and cosine and secant and cosecant, the other four trig functions, 2 pi. They repeat every 2 pi, every 360. So reminding you of some of the properties of the trig functions. So every pi, tan and cotan repeat, every 2 pi, sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant repeat themselves. So if you have some answer, and you go pi further down the line, you're going to be back at the same answer. Got two minutes, I better flip. 
and then we'll stop. All right, so last one, 25, that we have time for. You remember that little floating circle thing? Remember what that means? What's that little floating circle thing mean? Composition, stick one function in the other. Remember that? So that means f of h of pi over 6, like that. So you got to do, now what is h? Well, up here they're saying h is 2x. So that means h of pi over 6, the h, the h of x function is 2 times whatever you plug in. So 2 times pi over 6. What's that? 2 over 1, 2 goes into 6 3 times, pi over 3. So this becomes f of pi over 3. Too quick. And then what is f? f is cosine. So this is really cosine of pi over 3. Go to the unit circle, pi over 3, cosine, it's a half. All right, that's all the time we have.